Uh, the reason I brought you here today, I wanted to talk to you about a time uh, that happened a long time ago. Uh, the footage you're seeing is something that I do when I get especially distressed. I sit by a fire and mess with the fire and burn things. Um, so that's what that is. Uh, but the reason I've gathered you together today, and thanks for coming, uh, is I wanted to talk about this year of my life. It wasn't the only year. Uh, but it was one particular year where I decided to stop doing things. I don't know if you've ever done that in your life, like just stopped doing things. I'm sure you've done it. Uh, we all stop doing things here and there. It's just the duration to which we stop doing things that determine whether we're okay people or like, you know, severely mentally ill people, you know, labels, right? Um, but this, this is a year a long time ago. It was eighth grade. I was, you know, I was a kid. Uh, I mean, I was a kid for as much as you can call me being a kid. Like, I had already attempted suicide a couple times uh, by eighth grade, and, and uh, I had promised myself uh, that I would never do it again by using this trick of... Uh, I promised myself I, I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, and every day I check and, you know, is it today? Yeah, it's today. Well, dang, I'll have to make it through today, but I reserve the right to kill myself tomorrow. And every day I wake up and I check and it's still not tomorrow, you know? So, like, that little trick had kept me going and still, to this day, keeps me going. I'm 39 now. Uh, you know, like, I think about it every day, but uh, that, that trick keeps it from happening. Uh, but okay, so like all of that had already happened in my life and it's eighth grade now, you know. I'm, I'm this old man going through eighth grade and I'm starting to like see through the fabric of society at, at this point and I just decided, like I'm going to a school called Arlington Baptist School in Baltimore City and I just, I just decided to stop doing things. Like, they would get me, I mean, I would, I would show up I went to school, I'd listen to them, I'd absorb the information. If they gave me tests, I'd answer the questions. I'd get like 95% on most of the tests. You know, I was getting it. I was learning just fine. But when they gave me assignments, I would take those assignments home, you know, just put them in a pile and not do them. And I'd come in the next day and they'd be like, do you have your assignment? I would say, no. And they would say, why, why don't you have your assignment? I would say, I don't know. And they'd say, well, well I mean, are you are you gonna are you gonna do it and, and, and bring it tomorrow? And, I, and I'd say I don't know. And this got you know understandably frustrating for my teachers. They they were like, I, I keep asking him questions. He keeps just saying I don't know. Uh, you know, and they'd send me to the principal. And then so the principal then, Thomas Ryder, awesome dude. I can't believe he put up with this for a year, but. He'd call me into his office and he'd be like, so, um, teacher told me that you didn't do this thing. And I would say, yeah. And he would be like, well, why didn't you do the thing? And I'd say, I don't know. And he would be like, uh, I, are you okay? And I don't know. And I was like, well, uh, is there something that I can do? And, you know, and I would say, I don't know. <laughs> Like, this went on, and, you know, so these maddening conversations, like, I believe him being an, adult, uh, being an adult human being, I believe he redirected things around where at least the conversation made sense. But if you ask me a question during that period of my life, I say, I don't know. That would just became the rule. And day after day, the teachers would give me assignments, and day after day, I would take them home, and I would just leave them there, and I would not do them. And I would keep taking my tests, and I'd keep doing well on the tests. So obviously I'm paying attention, but I'm not doing anything I'm supposed to be doing. And they kept giving me demerits, after demerit, after demerit, just piles and piles of demerits. And the expectation is I take that demerit home to my mother and have her sign it and then bring it back uh, to the school so that they can see that my mother is aware that I have chosen to not do anything this year. Uh, and I started, like, I started doing it at first, you know, like the first few, the first handful, the first dozen, the first several dozen. I got her to sign, I brought them in school. But after a while, I was like, okay, you know what, 
They have just tricked me into doing assignments. And I decided this year that that's not something I'm doing. Uh, so I just stopped bringing them in, which made them even more upset, of course. And, uh, a and they just kept sending them home with me, and I just kept putting the demerits in the pile next to the assignments that I'm not doing that are generating these demerits. And I just had a pile of papers that just, you know, I could see they were nonsense. And I was letting the administration know, this is nonsense, and I know it. And they were like, no, it's not nonsense, it's important. And, uh, and I, through the use of those three beautiful words, I don't know. I, I, I just continued to prove to them, no, this is nonsense. And I see that. And I'm not going to let you fool me anymore. <laughs> And this went on for the entirety of eighth grade. When I finished eighth grade, I had great, like seventh grade, my grades were great. 80s, 90s, whatever. Uh, eighth grade, my grades were 30s, 40s, 50s, every class. Because I was doing fine on the tests, but I was turning in none of the work, zero of the work. And so those zeros are bringing my grade down to failing level. And they were like, okay, you're smart, but we can't just pass you to ninth grade on 30s, 40s, and 50s. Like, dude, that's not how school works. And I was like, well, what do you propose we do? And they were like, well, you're not going to do eighth grade again because clearly you weren't interested in doing it in the first place and clearly you absorbed all of the information. You are on summer suspension and will pass you to ninth grade in exchange for that. Now, what summer suspension is at, a, at this particular school, uh, Arlington Baptist, uh, was uh, sit in a room all day, uh, you know, sort out, sort out combination locks, just check them, make sure that the combination locks have the right combination labeled on them on a sticker. Um, scrape weeds off the curbs. It was just like, just dumb, dumb labor, tedious tasks. They were like, you get to do warehouse work for a month, and then we'll go ahead and pass you to ninth grade. Uh, which really was just reinforcing to me that I was correct. All of those assignments and all of those demerits were utterly meaningless, and I proved my point. Uh, and, and so that was a weird time in my life. And I wanted to tell you about it. I don't know why I wanted to tell you about it, but I did. So there. Now you know. The year that I stopped doing things. Like I said, not the only year. <laughs> but that was a particularly egregious one. Uh, eighth grade. I just stopped doing this. Just nothing. I was just like, nope, I'm not doing that. Nope, I'm going home. I'm watching A&E's Evening at the Haven Prov. And I'm going to go to sleep at a ungodly late hour, and I'm going to come back into school tomorrow and learn all this stuff by listening and looking at you. But no, that stupid piece of paper you gave me will not be returning to this building. God, I'm a dick. I really gotta, like, reevaluate my life. I, a lot of things have happened since then, so, you know, there's a lot more reason to do that. Hey, thanks for looking at all the sketches. That's what I've been showing you all this time in the visuals to this video. And thanks for listening to me rant about the year that I stopped doing things. Maybe we'll talk about other years that I stopped doing things. There were more. But yeah, eighth grade, ooh, that was a doozy. And Thomas Ryder is a saint for putting up with me for that entire year. Thank you, Thomas. If you end up watching this video, uh, you're an amazing man for having to put up with the with the extreme mental illness that, uh, that I was displaying that year. Anyway, my name's Joel. Thanks for listening to The Rant, and uh, go buy the album. I'm in a band with my three cats, Flight of the Chartreuse Kittens. Go to flightofthechartreusekittens.bandcamp.com if you want to support the band, or just look at the other YouTube videos. You, nobody pays for music anymore. The, the music videos are for free right here on my channel, so... Mm -hmm. Check it out if you like it. Send us money through the Bandcamp page, because that's fun. Thanks for listening to the rant. I'm sure I'll talk to you again.
Unless the medication starts working, then maybe we'll just cool down for a while. We'll, we'll, we'll see, and we'll work that out with the doctor.